Thank you everyone for joining us for this webinar, Martin P3 System Controller Software 5.2.0 In-Depth Training presenter, presented by Wouter Verlinden. My name is Laura Lawrence and I'm the Global Marketing Director at Harman. Just a few things before we get started. Everyone on the call is muted to keep down noise levels during the webinar. However, there is a Q&A function where you can submit questions to the presenter and he'll try to answer as many questions as possible at the end. This webinar is being recorded and the link will be made available a few days after this presentation. We are continuing our learning sessions into 2021, so please watch the calendar for upcoming sessions that are being added weekly and you can find that calendar on pro.harman.com. And now I would like to introduce you to my colleague, Wouter Verlinden, the presenter for today's webinar. Wouter started playing with lights at the age of 14 and in 2009, he joined Martin Professional as a project manager for Martin Visual Solutions. Two years later, he became a product manager, overseeing all Martin LED video and creative LED product developments, including the P3 system controller platform. And now I'll pass it to you, Outer. Thank you, Laura. Good uh, morning, evening, afternoon, uh, night for some people, maybe uh, even. Uh, welcome to this uh, training session on the new uh, P3 system controller software. Uh, it's been a, a crazy year, of course, as, as we all know, uh, but uh, our team kept very busy with uh, the new P3 software and we hope it brings you a lot of features uh, that you've been waiting for. Uh, the team managed to finish the software uh, before Christmas, so it's available right now. So let's dive into it. So uh, it was indeed released in December 2020. And of course, as with all P3 softwares, it's completely uh, free of charge. It's compatible with the current generation of P3 controllers, so the P350, 150, and 300. And it's, of course, also available in the P3 PC version, which is still also free of charge and outputs up to 20,000 pixels uh, of P3 data. But to keep supporting our existing customers, we also kept this software, the new software, compatible with uh, the legacy P3 system controllers, the P3100 and P3200. So even those older machines can still run the newest software and get some of the great benefits that this new software brings. So as I mentioned, it's a, available for download right now at martin.com. One warn, warning up front, uh, on all the P3 controllers, the update is just with a USB stick. On the older machines, the P3100 and the P3200, if they are running a software which is older than 5.0, you need to take the compact flash card out and run the recovery wizard as it will repartition that card. So only for the 100 and the 200, check if you're upgrading for older than 5.0, you need to follow the special procedure as also explained in the release notes. So let's dive right into uh, some of the new uh, features. First of all, the free scale mode. Uh, as some of you know or have experienced, uh, the P3 controller is always limited by the incoming video resolution. As an example, if you have a full HD input, which is 1920 pixels, if you start filling it up with Skeptrons, at some point you run out of pixels, you run out of space, which can be a massive issue on a very large stage or a very large building. Now with the new real, uh, sorry, with the new freescale configuration mode, P3 can scale up. So even if your stage or building is larger than uh, the resolution typically allows, in the new freescale mode, you can actually scale the video up and fit that larger surface. <clears throat> which basically now means that we now have three different show modes which you choose when creating a new show file. So we have the real world mode, which is the original P3 mode. In that mode, the P3 only scales down so it gives you the best image quality, but the workspace size is limited by the amount of pixels of your incoming uh, resolution. And of course, in real world, it's a great uh, mode for mix and match, as you will see right away. Then there is a 1-1 one -one mode. This, in this mode, the P3 does not do any scaling at all. So you're still limited by the resolution, but mix and matching of fixtures now means that the P3 does not do any scaling. So if you mix, mix, for example, a 10 millimeter product with a 20 millimeter product, you need to compensate for that in your video contents on the content side or the media server side. So in one one mode, the P3 is just a pixel pipe. And then we get to the new mode, the free scale mode. In this mode, P3 uh, allows you to scale up. So your workspace is virtually unlimited. I could build a stage which is 100 meter, 300 feet wide and fill it with full HD and it still covers all the fixtures. 
and also in this free scale mode, the P3 still mix and match fix. So you can still mix 10 millimeter products with 20 millimeter products. He still does all of that interscaling to make it match. But all of this is best demoed. So let's have a quick look at how the free scale mode works. So let's start with a first one. Let's do a first to a real uh, show file. So let's go for real world. So in real world, you always choose your finest pixel pitch. So if I'm, for example, building a show with Skeptron 10s and maybe some uh, video Fatron 20s, you pick the smallest pixel pitch, which is in this case, the 10 millimeter. And then you set the size of your stage, but I can of course do this in meters. But here you see the limitation of real world. I'm now limited to 19 meters by 10 meters because at a 10 millimeter resolution, that's when I'm out of pixels. So I can't go any bigger. I can of course make it smaller. So that, this is real world when you create a show and let me zoom in a little bit. If I would put in a Skeptron 10 and then put a Fatron 20 next to it, even though the Skeptron has 100 pixels and the Fatron has 50 pixels, but they're physically the same length. So you can now mix and match different types of fixtures. So a 10 millimeter fixture like the Skeptron with a 50 millimeter, uh, sorry, with a 20 millimeter fixture like the Fatron, you can just mix and match. He takes care of all the scaling. But as you, as you know, the size of your total workspace, of course, limited by that input resolution. If we take another look and now create a one one show file, this one, then you only have resolution, you no longer have physical uh, dimensions. So also here, you're limited by full HD, of course. If in a one one show file, I do the same exercise by adding a video Skeptron 10 millimeter and a video Fatron 20 millimeter, you now see that the Fatron is only half the length because in this mode, he completely ignores the pixel pitch. He just draws every fixture by its amount of pixels. So even though both of these in the real world are one meter long, he now just says, well, this is 100 pixels long and this is 50 by four pixels. So in this case, if you start mixing, you need to prepare for this in the content or do a remapping on the media server. So this one, one mode is really the preferred mode when you're working with a media server or specially made content that deals with all the scaling and, 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 and mapping issues. So then it's, it's more like a, the direct pixel pipe uh, approach. But now we get to the new mode and that is the uh, free scale. Of course, I already have a show with that name. So free scale. Freescale works the other way, around, other way around. So you just say how big do you want your st stage or building to be. So for example, hey, I want this a, a stage which is 10 meters, uh, sorry, 30 meters wide and 10 meter high. He then automatically, and you select, so you select your size of your stage and then what resolution you will be feeding into it. For example, here I take full HD and then he calculates back what the pixel pitch will be. But more importantly, here I'm not limited by that pixel pitch. So even products with a pixel pitch smaller than in this case, the 15 millimeter will be allowed. So if I create this file, you will see immediately it's a much bigger workspace. And I can demonstrate that by adding, uh, let's take some, uh, let's take some video phase five panels. Oh no, let's take some Skeptrons. So Skeptrons are one meter long. So you now will see that I can go a lot further. So now I'm able to put 30 Skeptrons across the workspace because I've created a stage which is 30 meter wide. So the P3 will now scale up the video to match this workspace. So you're no longer limited by the pixel pitch needs to be uh, accurate here. I can actually show you uh, that it is really 30 meter by just taking, uh, let's just put some video panels on there. So let's take some, uh, video phase five panels. So these panels have a pixel pitch of five millimeter. And even though the show file is 15 millimeters, so a lot larger in free scale, I'm allowed to do that. So I can, it's a, the panel is half a meter wide. So I should be able to get 60 panels in there and you will see exactly that. Let's start at 101 and you'll see now he makes a screen of 60 panels so 30 meters wide. So of course, what you will see when you do this free scaling is that he needs to scale the video up. So 
the resolution won't be accurate anymore. He just scales it up to that full HD image or whatever you select at a sort to fill that entire workspace. So probably not a great idea for a video panel product, but for a product like a Skeptron or a Fatron or, or any of the creative LED products, you won't see uh, you won't see any difference. It will it will look great in most circumstances. So that's free scale mode, a lot more freedom uh, for working with large buildings, large canvases, and P3 just scales in both directions to make it fit now. Good. Then let's get to some uh, of the uh, UI improvements, some of the workflow improvements. First off is the auto magnify easy hit functionality. We've all been there. You work on a large uh, on a large project. You zoom out a lot, and the fixtures become really, really small. It becomes very difficult to hit them. Certainly, narrow fixtures like a video scaptron, for example. Easy hit. If you enable it, it will automatically magnify a fixture as you get close to it, making it much easier to hit that fixture and drag it around. So that uh, really uh, makes the workflow a lot simpler. I will demonstrate that uh, right away, of course. Secondly is the Align tool. Also, the ones of you who've used P3 in the past know exactly what I'm talking about. When you're working with fixtures on the workspace, it can be very tedious to get them all aligned. For example, doing a row of Skeptrons here. Now with the new Align tool, I can get them all aligned in one click of a button. And the same, uh, in the same widget, we have the Spread tool. So uh, similarly, if I just wanna spread out fixtures evenly, just use the uh, spreading tool, and he will allow you to spread them out uh, as you want. This, of course, comes with some new keyboard shortcuts. So don't forget to download the shortcuts, uh, keyboard shortcuts uh, overview document from the web page. The new ones are align for align, A for aligning, S for spreading. And then we also added shift plus the arrow keys for minor adjustments to the big, uh, to fixtures. So with arrow keys, you can move fixtures around. Now with shift arrow, you can move them around in tiny little steps, baby steps, to get a better alignment. But let's dive into it and show you how that works. So first of all, uh, let's just put some scriptures here. What you will find here in the preferences menu is the enable magnified fixtures function. If I enable this, then as I get close to a fixture, he will scale it up and it will scale it up to a level that you can read uh, the number. This might not really come across perfectly on the, on, the, uh, on the meeting, on the recording here, because I'm running a 4K monitor, which is then compressed massively, but I can assure you, and you can also try it out with the software yourself. He just scales it up till the number is readable. So now instead of having to zoom in and out all the time, I can just hover, 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 uh, over uh, fixtures, and it's much easier to click them. And once you click them and start dragging them around, they go back to the real size, so you uh, can position them where you want it. So a lot easier now to hit the fixtures the way you want it. So a lot, a lot easier, definitely for those narrow and small fixtures that we have, like like scaptrons or pix lines on the architectural side. Good. Let's make it a little bit more messy. So let's add some stuff. So now we get to the aligning tool. So aligning tool, same thing, either you right click for align or new shortcut A. And now I can say, hey, I want to align these fixtures, either horizontal or vertical. I want to get them vertically aligned. Now they're all on one line without me having to drag them around. And then in the same widget, you will find the spread tool, which you can of course also find by right clicking spread. And now I can say how, how I want these fixtures spaced. It's now in millimeters because in my preferences, it's set to millimeters, but it, you can set it to pixels, millimeters, or inches. So now I can say, hey, I want every fixture to be, let's say, uh, 250 milli millimeters apart. And now they're perfectly uh, equally spread. I can also just use the scroll wheel on the mouse just to spread out the fixtures. So this is really easy to get a nice layout Without, with much less uh, dragging around on the workspace. Of course, you can do a little bit, you can do a lot more uh, stuff with that. You can also just offset them a bit like this. Quickly build something for you. And then I can do the same. I can say, uh, I wanna spread them out both horizontally and both vertically. So now you can make all these kind of 
uh, patterns just using the spread and align tool. So it works in horizontal and vertical axis. Same would be if I take some panels, let's take some, uh, some VC grids here. Just put a few tiles together. Also on a matrix, the spreading tools work perfectly fine. So select them all, once again, spread. I can add some horizontal spread, I can add some vertical spread. So a lot easier than dragging around fixtures one by one and doing all of that, uh, all of that fine tuning uh, yourself. And then last but least, the other thing I explained was with the arrow keys, you move fixtures in quite large, in normal steps, one pixel, with shift arrow, you now probably very difficult to see, but it's a lot less uh, big step. So that's definitely something uh, to try out and to be aware of when you're fine tuning your mapping. Good. Then uh, some of the new backgrounds. So first of all, uh, in the setup view, where you place your fixtures and where you uh, address your fixtures, now you can ha actually have the test patterns as a background. This was very difficult in the past. You will often like playing with, for example, the alignment bar, very difficult to find it. Um, and now uh, by drawing the, the test pattern on the workspace, you can see exactly where the test pattern is and then correlate that to the actual fixtures hanging there. So that's really helpful. But secondly, also in still in this setup view, you can now have the video as a background in setup view. So you don't need to toggle back and forth between setup view and video input view. In setup view, you can have the video as a background. So if you get a test pattern or a reference pattern from the media server guys, you can activate it and just position your fixtures right onto that pattern without having to uh, toggle back and forth. Uh, which now means in setup view, you can have a wide background, you can have an image or a drawing of the building or stage, or you can have the video inputs and the test patterns. So let's quickly show this. I'll sh load up another show file for this. Yeah, this one I had prepared for that. So in the uh, setup view, where you can add fixtures, you can now have the normal blank workspace, you can have the background image. And then you can start uh, mapping fixtures onto the background. Let's quickly add some uh, some federals here to the side. So that hasn't changed, it's still the same. But now I can also, as a background, activate my video input, which is the video input from uh, my media server. So I can also here put fixtures directly on the media. So imagine you get a test pattern or a, a template from the media server, guys, you can now just align your fixtures onto the video without constantly having to go back to the video view. But what's more, it's also rendering test patterns. So if I would do my device number, they're drawn here as well. Most of those are not very interesting, but the moving lines pattern shows you where everything is hitting. And the most useful one is obviously the alignment bar. I'm just gonna stop it for aligning fixtures like video fetchons. Now I can just move the alignment bar across the canvas and look at the stage or at the building and see where the fixtures are. So I can see, hey, this one is not hitting perfectly. And then I can, for example, here, let's just drag it there a little bit. I can in real time, while looking at the fixtures, seeing that the, the, the line is not hitting perfectly. So at the same time, I can do fine tuning of my mapping and then move the alignment bar a bit further so I can just step by step work through my mapping and see what's going on on the p3 and look at the fixtures and see that also in the, the real world it all maps out as you want so that uh, gives you a lot more uh, a lot more flexibility a lot more ergonomy here in the uh, in the setup view that you now also see the test patterns and the video here and that you're not forced to toggle back and forth as i mentioned But also the uh, the video input view, I uh, got an additional view mode. Now the video input view mode, now you can also have your uh, drawing of the building or of the stage as a background, and then it will render on top of it. So this is kind of um, a very basic visualizer of, of how your show will look. Uh, 
yeah, as you can see here on the drawing, this is a small stage. And then I added some video fatrons, some dotrons here, some Aura PXLs, and some uh, Allure profiles here. And then the fixtures render how they will look. The video is rendered on top of the drawing. So you get a much more realistic perspective on how, of how the video uh, will look. Uh, on on your stage, or it could be a could be a picture of of a building where you map some dots out, and then you see how it will all fit onto that building. So it kind of becomes also when creating content video files for for a project, it gives you a nice a nice uh, preview of how it will look on the real stage without going all the way to to an actual visualizer. So this now gives a lot more view modes in the video input view, but let's quickly uh, look at that as well. So let's disable this one. So the first mode here is, of course, that you just see the incoming video from your media server, in this case, a screen grabber. Second one is the same but with the fixtures overlaid. The fixtures which are not connected to your uh, P3, they stay black, so you can immediately see which fixtures are offline. In the offline modes, all the fixtures are being rendered, so you see how the content hits the fixtures. Same with fixtures only. None of them are really connected here. But in offline mode, I would see how the content is rendered across those fixtures. So without seeing the full images, you kind of see much better what parts will be visible on the fixtures. But of course, with the new mode display fixtures on a background image, it renders directly on the image. Uh, so this is, yeah, this gives you probably the best kind of visualization. Uh, that you can have without going to a, a real 3D visualizer. So just, it, it basically, so the, the background here, I forgot to mention actually, the background you see here is the same background as in setup view on the background image. So it's imported here in project options, background image, where you can import and scale a, a picture or drawing uh, of the building or the stage. Uh, this has been in there for a while, but it's now also available in the video input view as a background for uh, rendering uh, the content uh, hitting the fixture. So that hasn't uh, that hasn't changed, but it's now also available here. Uh, so that's how this works. If you're interested on on how to import a CAD drawing, that's actually a training video on on the Harman.com/training site because this feature has been here. Uh, for a while, uh, the feature of importing a drawing. Good. Just checking my time. We're still good on time. Cool. So then we get to uh, probably the the bigger changes. Uh, well, not the bigger. One of the the big change really is the way that the P3 handles DMX and Artnet. Uh, with regard to the older fixtures such as video caption and exterior pixel line. So as you probably know, newer fixtures such as the Mac Ara PXL or the Atomic Dots, they have a mix a P3 mix channel. So each of those newer fixtures has a dedicated channel where you can decide whether the output of the fixture is driven by video from the P3 or from colors from your lighting desk. So all of those fixtures you can toggle back and forth between a DMX controlled look and a video controlled look uh, with that P3 mix channel. A lot of people were asking, hey, can we get the same functionality uh, to fixtures like the video Skeptron? Because I want to be able to switch between video and DMX colors, or I want to be able to pixel map my Skeptrons instead of having to run video on for every single look or every single show. So we're now bringing this functionality to dynamically switch between video and DMX or video and pixel mapping from a desk to the legacy fixtures in the form of the P3 switch channel. And you will see right away how that works. But these new modes are available for the video Skeptron, Fatron, Dotron, Xtier Pixline, and the Dot HP, all the VC grid strip and dot products, and also all the video panels from the EC10, EC20, video phase five video phase five, and even all the way back to the LC uh, plus panels, of course. Those modes are not relevant for the newer fixtures because all the newer fixtures that are coming out in the Mac range, the video range, and the exterior range, they will have the P3 mix channel 
allowing you to crossfade between a pixel map DMX controlled look and a video driven look. So this is really uh, a feature for supporting all those fixtures out there. So how does it work in a, in a typical system? Uh, P3 controller is driving the fixtures. It's getting video from a media server, DMX or Artnet from a lighting desk. As you know, all the fixtures here at the top, RAPXL, the Allures, Atomic Dots, they all had the possibility to toggle between a video look and a console look using their P3 mix channel in their layout. But the slightly older fixtures did not have that possibility. There was a lot of workarounds with like activating a, a white test pattern and, and then controlling the color of that test pattern. Now all of that is a lot simpler using the P3 switch functionality. So how does it all work? So the first mode you have is the P3 hybrid mode. Uh, we'll see it right away in the patching process, but essentially when you patch one of those fixtures in P3 hybrid mode, as you can see here, the fixture gets a 16-bit dimmer. Then the most important channel, the P3 switch channel, uh, which basically determines for that fixture, am I running video or am I running DMX? That's what you control with the dedicated P3 switch channel that you have on the fixture which I will demo right away. And then you basically have blocks of RGB. And you can decide yourself when patching fixtures, how many blocks of RGB you want. So a Skeptron, you can say, hey, in the mix mode, I want it to be 10 blocks of 10 centimeter. Then you say it's 10 blocks. You could even go say, no, I want my Skeptrons to be pixel map. So I want 300, uh, sorry, I want 100 blocks of RGB. So then that takes up 300 channels plus the switch and the dimmer. So complete freedom of when patching these fixtures in this new hybrid mode, as you will see uh, right, right away. So how does it then work? Just to recapitulate, uh, summarize here again, I couldn't get the word. So P3 still drives the fixture, still can get video, but now with Artnet, you can also pixel map them at the same time. And from the desk, I can for every fixture in the rig now determine if it's playing video or if it is playing uh, Artnet and it could be pixel mapping, just depends in, in how many segments you map the fixture, as you will see right away. Then we have the second new mode, which is the pixel map mode. Uh, the pixel map mode is essentially the same as the hybrid mode, but we don't no longer have a, a dimmer channel and a P3 switch channel. Not having these channels means that as soon on the P3 as you patch a fixture in pixel map mode, it will never play video again till you disable the mix again, but uh, it's basically in that mode, when you put a, pic a fixture in pixel map mode, the P3 takes Artnet in and resends it out to the fixture. The fixture never sees any video anymore. So this is a, when you just want to pixel map fixtures and you don't want to, you, you never want to run them in video. So it's, it's basically the P3 becomes like an Artnet to P3 uh, conversion box. Also in this mode, you can choose uh, how many segments you want every fixture to be. Of course, you can put, as I mentioned, the Skeptron in one pixel is uh, three DMX channels. Then you run out of DMX channels quite quickly on, on, on most consoles. But you can also say, hey, I want them to be like blocks of five LEDs or blocks of six. It's complete freedom here as well. But you will see that right away. So here, you no longer have a video source. It's just a P3 controller or the free P3 PC software taking Artnet in, translating that to P3. So that's pixel net mode, no more video involved. It's just an Artnet to P3 bridge. Of course, you can do a mix of both. You can have some fixtures running in pixel net mode and some fixtures still running video. So it, it's one does not exclude the other. It's not that it needs to be the same for all fixtures. It just, you choose it for every fixture that you patch. But of course, it can even be simpler. I could also even on one laptop run P3 PC and then some media package or some pixel mapping uh, software like Matrix. And then I do not need any other uh, things than just my laptop running Matrix and, and P3PC. So Matrix sends Artnet to P3PC and P3PC turns that into uh, P3 data for fixtures like Skeptron. So that's a very compact, very simple system uh, to run fixtures like Skeptrons, Fetrons, uh, Pixlines uh, and others, uh, of course. And don't forget, P3PC is completely license-free, completely free of charge since a year now. So this is, a, apart from the fixtures, it's a completely free control solution uh, from our side. 
One last thing before we go demoing this is that on the uh, P3PC, uh, when you patch fixtures in pixel map mode or in hybrid mode, it will actually preview that, previs that on the uh, P3 itself. So you will see what you're sending from the console will be visualized in the visualizer. So you will see how the pixel mapping will affect the fixture. So you can actually also use a P3 as a, as a pixel mapping visualizer uh, solution right now. So let's go demo that right away. So uh, let's quickly take some fixtures. Uh, let's just zoom in a little bit. I'll just take those four video fetchons. And then I go to DMX and motion. And I want to patch them. Of course, we still, are, let's make it a little bit bigger. We still have the uh, old mode P3 intensity, which is just an intensity for the video. P3 RGB, which is the colors for video, and P3 basic, which is a combination of both. Those uh, existing modes are still there. But now we get the new two new modes. We get hybrid and pixel map. So as I mentioned, hybrid mode, you get a 16-bit dimmer, a P3 switch, and then blocks of RGB. In pixel map mode, it's basically the same, but it's there's no more dimmer and there's no more P3 switch. So it's pure pixel mapping uh, that you're doing. But let's take the example of hybrid because it's a superset. And here, once you select hybrid, you have a very important choice to make you say, how big do you want each RGB cell to be? You can de determine this two ways. You can say pixel per pixels per segment. That means that if I set it to one, that every LED gets three RGB channels. If I set it to two, then a block of two will be driven by the same dimmix channels. If I set it to one, you can set it to everything all the way up to maximum is, is 200 pixels because a video fetron, which I used here, has 200 pixels. And if I set it to this, then all the LEDs are on the same three dynamic channels. So that's one way of determining it. It's setting how many pixels you want in each block to be in each segment. The other way around is saying how many segments per fixture you want. So that's basically just the opposite. In this case, it says one segment per fixture, which means it takes the fetron, it's one block of RGB, and here you can also count up. So I can say 10, I want to split the fixture in 10 segments. So then basically you get 30, uh, well, 10 sets of RGB. So that's 30 channels plus then the dimmer and, in, and the switch channel. So it just depends what you want to do. You want to count pixels or you want to just say, well, put it in blocks. Uh, for this example, I'm going to just take the video fetchals and say I put them in blocks, in 10 blocks because that's still quite visible on, the, on the, the streaming. But here also, I could go all the way up to 200 blocks saying that every LED is its own DMX channel. And then I've created a fixture with 603 channels, of course. So also here, as I mentioned, complete freedom. So let's go for 10 segments per fixture, uh, consecutive, that hasn't changed. And I said, let's put them in ArtNet uh, Universe 1, a start address 1. I create a patch and of course, you can also in the live value see what you're getting from the console. So let's now go to the visualizer and you'll see now those four fixtures went all the way uh, white. Why did it happen? Why are they no longer showing video? Well, that's not what I want to do. Let's take this one. And let's add my console next to it. So what happened here is, this is my, my MA software. So on the fixtures themselves, they now, as I mentioned, have they have a 16-bit dimmer, but they also have the P3 switch channel. So the P3 switch channel on the, on the new MA3 format, uh, using the GTF uh, personality files, you can't just choose your own uh, parameter name. So it had to be characterized under play mode. In some show files, it shows up under Gobo, and in some others, I've seen it up uh, show up under the uh, video uh, set. So either Gobo or video, I haven't quite figured out how I made deals with this, but you should always look for the uh, play mode fixture. So uh, actually, I've patched them here. Let me quickly take a step back and show you the patch on the uh, MA uh, before I forget to do it. So what you see here on the patch is that I've patched uh, four video fetrons, and I've patched them in P3 
P3 hybrid mode with 10 segments, just like I did on the console. You will find here that all the different modes with the different amounts of segments are available in the library. But I will, I will get back to that. We, we actually did build all those personalities for you in the GDTF format. But just for this example, I just patched it as 10 segments consuming 33 channels. Uh, no. So getting back to the fixtures. So I've selected my main fixtures here. And as I mentioned, they have the P3 switch channel, which is parked under play mode. If I select that parameter, you will see it's a very simple channel. It's either DMX or video. So now they're set to DMX and that's why they're sh just showing full white. If I set them to video, they will be playing a video. So using the play mode channel, I can now on a fixture by fixture level, I can say, hey, this one needs to go to DMX and then it will start running uh, DMX or let's bring it back to video and then it plays video. Uh, let's go back to the MX. And then, of course, you have the RGB uh, segment, so the, the sub fixture of it, which in this case is 10 because I patched them in 10 segment mode. And then I just, on these ones, I can just dial in a color and then they will just show that color. Or as it's 10 cells, I can also do like some, some, uh, mark, uh, some effects, which is called phasers on the new, uh, on the new console here. So I can now just run pixel map effects or segment effects from my console using all those RGB sub fixtures uh, that exist. Once again, it's just uh, 10 segments for a fixture here. You can go crazy and go here all the way saying, I want an, an RGB cell for every fixture and, and create that fetch on in, in, 200, uh, in 200 segments uh, hybrid mode. So, Really, as I, as, I, as I was showing, very easy. I can now take, for example, my top two fixtures and say, hey, for this song, I want them to, be, to play video. So this really gives you a lot more freedom, both on the pure pixel mapping side, but also on, on using a mix of, of video looks and, 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 and uh, the mix looks. I could have video running on my entire stage and I could zoom out a little bit. I could have video running across all my veterans and just say, well, for this particular queue, I just want those four fatrons to be in full white. So I just, on the desk, using the P3 switch, I put them in the mix mode and dial a color on the desk. In the past, this was very difficult. You had to do some video content to hit exactly those fixtures. Now all of that is completely gone with, uh, with the new functionality. I can just toggle every fixture between a video look and a uh, the mix controlled or pixel map look. Good. Let's switch back. So of course, new DMX modes uh, brings a lot uh, of documentation updates. So first of all, for the, the, the most popular products, the Skeptron, the Fatron, and Dotron, we have already updated the user manuals. So the new P3 modes, the P3 hybrid and the P3 pixel map have been added to the manuals. And of course, we will start sending these manuals out to all the console visualizer and media server manufacturers so that they can update their library to represent the new possibilities uh, on the fixtures. Also for consoles, visualizers, and media servers using the GDTF format, such as the MA or the SHAMSYS uh, systems, we have built uh, Martin-made GDTF files for those fixtures, as, as you saw on the, on the software earlier, that uh, have all the new modes in there. So both the the direct DMX mode, so the, the modes when you run the fixtures with DMX straight from the console. So the modes have always been there. But in the same file, you will also have the P3 DMX mode. So the DMX modes when you run the fixtures via a P3 controller, including the hybrid mode and the pixel map mode with all the different possibilities of uh, segment counts. So for example, on a Skeptron, there is a, a file where it's just one block, two blocks, five blocks, 10 blocks, 20 blocks, 25, all the way up to 100 blocks. Uh, so all of those modes are available. So you shouldn't have to build those files yourself. So check out the Martin website for the updated fixture manuals. Check out the GDTF share where Martin Professional has a, has a page with all of our fixtures. And the P3, docum P3 DMX document itself has always also been updated to also reflect these new possibilities.
So now we allow all of these day mix control and pixel mapping options. We have also uh, increased the amount of universes on the machines. So P350, 150, and PC have been increased to 128 universes. P3300 has a little hardware limitation on the memory side, so we could only push that up to 64 universes. Uh, P3 PC, he went to 128, as I mentioned. And the older P300, 200, we couldn't get them above uh, four, so they are stuck at four. But yeah, as you see, all of the new machines and also the P3 PC software uh, have been uh, pumped up uh, quite heavily. 128 universes, even if you put Skeptrons in, in pixel map mode and allow them to cross universes, that's more than 200 Skeptrons. If you just put the Skeptrons in two of these per segment, you can already get 400 uh, Skeptrons there because the P3 actually allows you to split fixtures across multiple universes uh, if, if, if you want to get uh, optimal universe utilization. Which of course means that the capacity uh, document on the P3s has been updated to reflect those new uh, limitations of universe of ArtNet. For those of you wondering about uh, streaming ACN, that is coming in 5.3. We actually already started working on that. So streaming ACN will be added within the next few months to the system and will have the same, uh, the same limitations. Another thing uh, which we added on, on, on the back of this in terms of uh, DMX and ArtNet is we now have a possibility what to do uh, on loss of DMX. So the P3, you can choose between hold your DMX values or go blackout. So that's just a preference in your project option. So it travels with the show file. What do you want the P3 to do when the, the network goes away, the P3, uh, the ArtNet or the DMX? Uh, secondly, uh, we've also made the P3 controllers auto pick their uh, ArtNet IP address. In the ArtNet protocol, there's actually a, uh, a recommendation on what uh, ArtNet address, what, sorry, what IP address to use for ArtNet. The P3 controller now also automatically sets the IP address. So in 90% of the cases, you don't have to worry about it. It's in a, in a standard uh, two dot uh, network, but you can of course still manually override it. But it basically makes the P3 behave just like the Mac RIPXL or the Atomic Dot, all of our fixtures with ArtNet. They pick their own uh, IP address following the standard, but you can still override it. Cool, time to summarize. So first of all, yeah. What do we have? We have the free scale mode, allowing you to scale up beyond the limitations of full HD. We have some uh, UI improvements, auto magnify easy hit, the align tool for aligning fixtures, the spread tool for spreading fixtures, some additional keyboard shortcuts. Then we get to setup view where you now can have test patterns and video as a background. So making it a lot easier to position your fixtures uh, without toggling back and forth. The new possibilities to visualize by rendering the fixtures on a drawing of your stage or a picture of your stage or building. And then the new DMX modes, the hybrid mode, toggling between video and, and DMX on a fixture per fixture basis. And the pixel map mode, if you don't want to use video at all, you just want a pure pixel map. As, as you could see, the P3 visualizes the hybrid and pixel map mode. So whatever's coming from the desk, you can now see in the preview screen as well. We bumped up the universes and we have some hold and blackouts added to DMX. That's all for the software. One more thing, which we always, uh, well, since since a year have been doing, every time we release a new P3 software, we also give you a bunch of uh, free uh, video content. So I have to thank my colleague Bjorn for that. So with version 5.2 of the software, you will find on the Martin web pages, a new Martin P3 content pack. Uh, now a total of 250 video clips. These clips are typically not really made for video walls. They're really more made for our creative products. So for Skeptrons, Fetrons, Megara Pixels, for those type of fixtures, uh, this content has been specifically made uh, to look great. There's a lot of just black and white content, which you can then from the console can color, but there's also some uh, colored content as well. So surely go check out that free content package. Before we get uh, to the questions, uh, I, I quickly want to summarize what you should be looking for when you, when you get out of this session. First of all, the new software is available on the website, the content package as well. For those of you not yet on the P3 user group on Facebook, check it out. Just look for Martin P3 
on Facebook, there's a user group uh, where all of us P3 geeks hang around. Updated the MX protocol on the P3, the Martin GDTF share, where now all the video fixtures have been made. Uh, but a lot more fixtures will be made available over the coming months. We're actually getting up to speed on building GTA files right now. New updated keyword shortcuts document, also available on all the P3 pages. Updated capacity document. And don't forget martin.com slash training, where you find all the training videos. And of course, we'll start producing training videos on all the new features covered in version 5.2. So let's now hand it back over to you guys and uh, take some questions. Okay. The first question is asking, um, by putting video in MA3, are we taking over the video world as well as lighting? Sorry, uh, Laura, I didn't, I didn't get that. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you, sorry. Okay, by putting video in MA3, are we taking over the video world as well as lighting? Yes, it's all video now. <laughs> I mean, the it, yeah, it it really is. What we learned from the Skeptron in the in the early days, we we always saw it as a video product, but we see that at least fifty percent of people see it as a lighting product. So by now, putting this new mode in there, you can really you do no longer need to choose. You don't no, no longer need to say, well, the Skeptron, that's a video product because you need to run it with video content. Now you can just freely run video into it or run the mix with it. We just give you both options, whether you see it as a video product or a lighting product. But yes, from the MA, you now have that video parameter there to toggle between the two, yes. All right. For fixtures patched and hybrid mode, how is intensity do you only need that when the mix channel is on DMX, or will you also need it when the mix channel is set to video? Uh, very good question. Yes. So the when you patch a fixture in hybrid mode, which has that 16-bit dimmer, the dimmer always controls the fixture. So no matter if the P3 switch the P3 switch channel is set to DMX or if it's set to video, no matter if you're showing DMX or pixel mapping from the desk or from the uh, video from the media server, the intensity channel always controls the fixture. So no matter where you toggle with the P3 switch, the dimmer intensity channel always controls the fixture. So yes. Can you fade between the P3 switch mode or is it only switch between? So that's uh, one limitation of this P3 switch is it, it can only do a switch. Those older products, well, I call them old, but uh, they're still quite new, but anyway, uh, they do not have the, the brain power, the capacity to, to do the crossfade. All the new ones have, so all the Mac Ara, Mac Allure, uh, Atomic Dot, and a lot more fixtures that are coming, which I cannot yet, yet uh, tell you about. They all have the mix, so there you can crossfade. But for all the legacy or older fixtures, it's uh, limited to the P3 switch. So it's, it's a hard switch between video and uh, the mix, but it's on a fixture by fixture base. So it's not the full show, it's every fixture on its own. Is there a link on the Martin website to access the GDTF share? Not yet, uh, but we will make a, we will make a, a link to that. A very a very very valid point, Andre. Uh, right now, you just go into GDTF share. You need to log in, of course, and just search for Martin. All the files there are Martin made files, but there will be a direct link from Martin.com. Can the P3 be fully controlled from LX Desk in QStacks or Excited, etc.? Yes. So yes. So uh, from uh, from the lighting desk, you can take more. I mean, I, I only showed the P3 switch and so the new functionality there, but you can do a lot more via the mix uh, on the P3. So from a lighting desk, I can also toggle presets on the P3. I can switch fixtures between the mix and video. So all of that can be on a, on a, on a stack on the on the lighting desk. So a lot more than just the toggling uh, that I was showing today. Is there an upper limit to the free scale size, say 1.92 km by 1.08 km, one pixel per subtron, or is it limited eight times like the downscaling is limited to one eighth? The, is there a limit? Uh, yes, there is a limit and I found it the other day and it's, it's like 
two kilometers or something. You can make a show file two kilometers wide, uh, which gives you a pixel pitch. Is it 100 millimeter or 1,000 millimeter? So the, finally, there is an upper limit, but it's really, really far away. Uh, the only limit is that the downscaling can only do 20, meaning if I build a show file with a pixel pitch of 100, which would be 192 meters. So if I build a show file 192 meters wide, where every pixel is 100 millimeter, then I cannot use products with a pixel bit smaller than five. So even if I make a show file of 192, I can still fit a, a, face, a video face five panel there. So the limits, the limits are insane. There is some limits because all software, you always need to put some limits, otherwise something breaks, but the limits are insane. Okay, it looks like that was the last question that came in. Um, if anybody has additional questions, Louder, do you want to share your email address? Uh, yes. Uh, well, what's the easy way out? Probably just my name. Go all the way back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so it's basically wouter.verlinden at harman.com. Uh, so feel, feel free to find me there, wouter.verlinden uh, at harman.com. Or as I mentioned, get onto the P3 uh, user group on Facebook, if you're still into Facebook. Uh, I'm also, I'm probably I'm still into Facebook. I'm not yet on the newer systems. But anyway, uh, get to the P3 user group and you will also find me there uh, for questions and answers. You can also um, contact me through the registration link if you want to, and I can pass that on to Wouter as well. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Water, for the presentation. Uh, we really appreciate you presenting again with us on the learning sessions, giving this great overview of P3. Um, and just a reminder to everybody, we have one final session in our learning sessions tomorrow, and that's on trade show booth lighting design from start to finish with Michael Mahoney. And then that will wrap up 2020 with the learning sessions, but then we're going to jump back into it in 2021 with a number of, of sessions in January. So watch on the calendar at pro.harman.com, and we look forward to you there. And if I don't see you tomorrow, happy holidays. Thanks, Water. Happy holidays, everybody. Bye.